In this video, we are going to create some obstacles for our temple run prototype. Now, there are many ways you can create an obstacle and they are fairly easy to make. Hence, I am only going to focus on creating two types of obstacles, mainly for demonstrating how you could create an obstacle that would work well with our procedural generator. So the first type of obstacle would be the classic wall. You can create an infinite versions of this type of obstacle by just changing its static mesh. And the second type of obstacle would be a laser or a saw that goes back and forth where the player has to jump over it. So I'm going to use the DP ground tile to add our obstacles because it is a more suitable tile for the types of obstacles we intend to use. So open it up. And then in here, I'm going to go to the viewport. So the way we are going to implement our obstacles is by adding them into our ground tile as components, which will be kind of like disabled by default. And then we are going to use the blueprints to create a logic that would randomly choose to either have an obstacle or not. And if it does choose to have an obstacle, then it will choose one among the two types of obstacles by re-enabling it. So we're going to go over here and click on the plus button over here and then type static mesh. And I'm going to name this as obstacle wall door. Just going to remove that thing. Over to the details panel, I'm going to click on the drop down icon over here and then type wall door. And I'm going to rotate this. And I'm going to move this towards the center and then scale it. After this, I'm going to click on the add button over here and then type static mesh again. And I'm going to call this obstacle laser. Remove the parenting again. So yeah, so this this component over here, this static mesh, is going to be our laser obstacle. So over in the wall door, I'm just gonna I'm gonna disable visibility so that it's easier for us to kind of deal with this with this obstacle. And in here, click on the drop down button and type pillar, a pillar static mesh, and then I'm going to rotate this. Then I'm going to move it up. And then position it at the center because unlike the other obstacles we need to move this mesh back and forth so we need some space for that i'm going to change the perspective to top set this to light and i'm going to scale it go back to perspective and i'm going to lower this a bit so that our player can jump over it so once you're done with that you can go over to the even graph and in here we're going to create the logic so from the even begin play I'm going to drag this out and type switch on end. And in here, I'm going to drag from the selection input pin and type random integer in range. And then over in the max value, I'm going to set it as two because we only have two obstacles over here. So over here, I'm going to in the switch on end, I'm going to click on the add pin over here click on it twice so that we have two output pins and drag from one of them that is the zero output pin and then type set visibility so we're going to first set the visibility of the obstacle wall door over here so i'm just going to drag this out over here i'm going to drag from the obstacle wall door and then type set collision enabled so in the set collision enabled we have this input pin known as new type. Click on the drop down box over here and then select collision enabled query and physics. Then drag from here and type set component tick enabled. We're going to connect the obstacle wall door to the target pin over here and then make sure to click on the box over here next to enabled. And that's it for our obstacle wall door. I'm going to copy these three nodes over here and I'm going to paste them over here and then drag from the execution pin 
and connect it to set visibility and then the obstacle laser over here i'm going to drag this and connect it to the target of each of these three nodes over here so make sure this new visibility is set to true over here as well so after that i'm going to drag from the execution node over here and then i'm going to type timeline and in here i'm going to double click on this timeline node and it will open this new tab over here and in here i'm going to click on this plus icon or track and select a vector track all this laser movement and then in the graph over here right click and then select add key to curve float and in here i'm going to reset this to zero in all the values then i'm going to add another key by right clicking and then selecting this add key to curve float then this time i'm going to give this a value of one so that means after one second the value will be 2.5 and then i'm going to add another key and this time it will be after two seconds the value is going to be back to zero and then create another key set the time as three so after three seconds the value is going to be minus 2.5 and then again another key this time the time will be four so after four seconds the value will go back to being zero so basically what this does is it will make the obstacle laser over here go back and forth over and over again so select on all of these keys over here and then while hovering your mouse over one of these keys right click and then select auto this will kind of smoothen the transition of each of these keys so this means that the laser will have an overall smoother movement after you're done you can go back to the event graph actually i forgot go back to the timeline and then click on this loop icon over here this is so that the the timeline will kind of repeat this particular node over and over so that the the obstacle laser will keep moving back and forth from here over and over and the player has to jump over from this back in the event graph drag from the update execution pin and then type add local offset i'm going to drag this off and then drag from laser movement from the timeline node and then type make vector i'm going to cut the connection again and then give this a value on the y-axis and the return value i'm going to connect it with the delta location over here the reason we've done this is because we want the obstacle to go back and forth like this we don't want it to go up and down or anything just back and forth that's the only movement we want and hence why we created a separate vector and then added it onto the delta location over here after you're done with that go to the viewport and in here go to obstacle wall door under component tick disable the start with tick enabled just uncheck this drag down and over here we have collision and under collision we have the collision presets in the drop down menu by clicking on this select no collision and scroll down and under rendering all right so it's always set to we kind of already set this to false before so we don't need to do that over here do the same thing over in the obstacle laser and then compile and test the game so our obstacles are being generated properly and over here we have our new obstacle currently if you were to step on any of these uh, nothing really will happen we still haven't added the uh, logic to kind of destroy our character so we have to add that next but yeah with this you can really you know, create your own obstacles like the main point behind creating this is to just give you all an idea on how to create your own obstacles and over in the event graph i'm just going to quickly explain how this works so basically when the component is created from the begin play 
it will first execute the switch on int and from the random integer in range where we gave the max value is 2 because we only had two obstacles. If you plan to add more obstacles in here then you would increase this value over here and then subsequently create a new pin and then basically recreate this thing over here if it's a static mesh. If it's going to be something moving you will kind of use this logic over here you kind of like copy and paste this and then maybe in the timeline node you're going to kind of modify its values so that the obstacle kind of moves a bit more differently you know based on what kind of mesh you have selected the mesh will kind of you know move based on your needs it's a fairly simple logic so when you execute this logic from the random integer in range one of these values will be selected so that would be 0, 1 and 2 if uh, from the random integer range the value is 2 then basically there will not be any obstacle so that's why the default over here is set to nothing so that there will be no obstacles we don't want every ground tile to have an obstacle we want some of the ground tiles to not have any obstacles that's basically how you create an obstacle and this works just in about any other tiles so you can make this work in any other tiles over here and it should still work fine but yeah that's it thanks for watching see you later bye